Okay, well, hey guys, my name is Kellen Crane. Uh, I am a graduated senior from Lake Highlands. I've been going to Lake Highlands Church my entire life. This racial unrest did not start in March of 2020. It's a, a hundreds of year battle. Word. But I have, I mean, I've been like encountering stuff like this, obviously from a different side of it since junior high. I mean, in 2014 was when Ferguson happened and Michael Brown and Tamir Rice and hundreds of others. But that was, I was in junior high when that happened. So like, I've been like, I've grown up with this notion of just tension. Yeah. And that's, that was clear as early as junior high for me that there's, there's a divide. There's, I mean, there's like a cl very cloudy air around like every room you walk in when there's a divide of color. And like, that's, it's bothered me ever since then my junior year, there was a girl who wrote a KKK symbol on her forehead, a Nazi symbol on her cheek and posted it all over in social media. And, you know, it's just, you're, it's so hateful. And I mean, you, I just felt like I was like being called in that moment to start writing and to start speaking out. Cause up to that point, I'd been, I'd been a bit more quiet about it and that's complicit. So you've been that, um, ambassador of Christ um, at your school and you've been part of conversations um, to diversify your high school and to bring about those reforms. My first friend was, uh, his name is Jeever, like he's a member of our church, he's a member of my life group and that was my first real friend. And like he welcomes me into his group and he welcomes me into like his community and I mean, that's, he's been my people for I mean, six, seven years now. But I mean, Tom Whitaker, like in the youth group, very early on, he was, he was very intentional about um, racial reconciliation and being agents for change and bridge builders um, between the races. Because there was a lot of, there was a lot of tension early on in, <laughs> in like in the group. And yeah. just between, between, we were, it was almost like there was two youth groups. Um, he instilled in me very on just like, be a bridge builder be an yeah. agent for change for ref racial reconciliation like let's try to fix things like let's try to like, like let's be friends but isaiah and jeffrey and ish and ladue those that's been my community since mm -hmm. since like it's like junior year or, or sorry seventh grade but up and like kept adding until my freshman year and it's like even before we were like a church group we were a small group yeah. and we were communing together and like I've, we spent like countless hours together, building each other up, like calling each other out sometimes. Sometimes it got a little aggressive, but that's we've been real, like uh, like very authentic with each other. They, I've been there for them, and they've been there for me. Share some of the barriers of challenges that has arrived um, from being a diverse group of people um, from different back backgrounds what are some of those barriers and challenges that you have to overcome and how did you overcome those as early as i mean eighth grade i mean we're hanging out playing basketball at the park when like an old like an older white man would come up and like he screamed at one of my friends hmm. like saying unspeakable things that unfortunately is echoing very is very similar to some of the things that some of these people are uh are doing right now and saying right now and like you just getting stopped and checked and getting stares just like people are freaking out it's like oh like what's up with this what's up with this group you know and like them think people assuming the worst of my friends when in reality i was the one stirring up all the trouble so i mean like <laughs> it's i don't know i don't know like but i mean you look at what happened in february when juve and isaiah went to i mean we're at a basketball game and a kid posts this picture of them because I mean, posts a picture of them calling them the n-word and like r like ridiculing them and like ridiculing the school and yeah. like that just watching them like these these are the like, two of the most popular guys and like popular seniors like most well liked most well respected right. and they're getting trashed and watching them like watching like just seeing them like these aren't emotional dudes by any means but seeing the pain in their eyes and seeing just like how defeated they are in that moment and how like broken they were. And I will never understand that pain. 
I mean, like people who look like me will never fully understand like how horrific that is, but they're used to it. I mean, they're 17, 18 years old and they're used to this type of hatred, this type of bias against them. And it's sickening. Yeah. And like, that's why like, that's why I've been so intentional about speaking out because I recognize that I have a privilege as a white man to speak out without getting punished. I mean, I'm, I'm writing and I'm being incredibly, um, like I'm being incredibly critical of the district of everyone who's like in support of this or is like quietly not speaking out. And I'm not going to get punished for that. I'm not going to get like, nothing's going to happen to me, but some of my other friends who tried to speak out against this, they got suspended. There's a disconnect there. And I have to, you have to recognize that as white people to, and like utilize the privilege you have to, to speak out, to yeah. speak up and speak out. And that's, Failure, like failing to do that is unacceptable. That's so true. And I want you to give us some personal examples in your life of like what it means just to be that ambassador, um, ambassador of Christ for people and being their voices when they don't have any or my fear that they might be punished for speaking out what is right, mm -hmm. you know? Um, like mm -hmm. when that racial... In, injustice happened with your two friends what did you do you know mm -hmm. well with like i'm in positions of, i'm in positions of leadership i was in position of leadership at, at the high school at lake highlands to i'm meeting with the superintendent every month i don't recommend this but i blew up her phone i spammed all the principals the superintendent everybody to try to find this kid and get him punished Get, to get justice for my friends. I will give an account of what I do and what I mm -hmm. say. And if I'm his agent of change and if I represent him rightly in my heart or overtly, you know, in my right. action. So it's, it's, it's important that we- That's the, that's the first that. step. Yeah. That's the first step for making real change is to check your own heart. Why do you get nervous when you see a person of color walking down the, like walking down the street? Why do you cross the street when you see someone walking past you that looks suspicious in your eyes? This person's not suspicious. You just feel that way. But like, why do you feel that way? And we can all do something. Like if someone mm -hmm. is making even a joke, like a racial joke, that is not okay and you could step in mm -hmm. and speak out to right there or if someone is making a comment about someone that is not right even if it's not racially if it's just not right mm -hmm. we need Absolutely. to call those things out um and speak out and stand up for people that are marginalized um, Absolutely. because we're all made in the image of god and he values us to death, like he sacrificed himself, and that's a value tag that is on each one of our lives. So mm -hmm. we get to display um, and be ambassadors of those values that he places on us. Okay. Um, we, we have a beautiful picture of God's heart in Revelation 7 of a great multitude of people, no one could even count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages before the throne worshiping God. It is so awesome. And Jesus also prayed in John 17 for his people, the church, to be unified. So right. in your perspective, how can the church live out this unity that Jesus prayed for in John 17? practically walking out in unity, but at the same time, celebrating our differences um, and diversity. Mm -hmm. Well, I first, I have a big issue with people who say that they don't see color. Like just that statement alone, I think is dangerous. Yes. I mean, we see it, embrace it, love it, appreciate it in other people. Like by saying that, oh, I'm colorblind, I don't see difference, appreciate it, acknowledge it. Like, it's beautiful like how diverse we are yeah. and even though there's a lot we need to do um 
I'd say that the first thing, like for especially like for the live groups, is look at the people that you're um can be, you're communing with. Do they look a lot like me? Do they look like a lot like I mean, like a lot like how you look, or do they look, or is it diverse? So I encourage the life groups to, I mean, look into seek out relationships, real relationships with people who do not look nothing like you. Yeah. Um, when we, whenever we go back to church in person, when Pastor Keith is saying, "Hey, go talk to someone you don't know," I'm calling y'all out right now. Woo! I know y'all go to the same people every Good. time. I see it. I'm watching it. I Word. do it too. But go talk to people that are different from you and look, don't look like you and have a real conversation, even if it's just for five minutes yeah. or whatever it might be. Like, learn, ask questions, learn about our cultures and the differences that we have and appreciate them. So he called us to his ministry of reconciliation and for us to be ambassadors of Christ. And I also love that Jesus reminded us that the world would know that we are his disciple by the way mm -hmm. that we love one another. So what are some practical ways um, that you could think of that we can live that out? Well, I'd say the first thing is, like I said earlier, is to check your heart, is check your biases. Um, another step is to educate. That's just as important. Educate yourself on the plights of people of color and the struggles. Um, read, read a ton. Watch documentaries like Ava DuVernay's The 13th is an incredible documentary. Um, and then, like, kind of like I, we touched on earlier, is like seek out people who are different from you. Seek them out, like, befriend them, talk to them, share with them, and get real with them. I mean, you know, like that's like those are like the steps to do it. Understand the struggles and then go out and, and not try to do too much, but to be be real with each other, be authentic, be sincere, and mm -hmm. be friends. Loving God and loving people is the same coin but different mm -hmm. side. Absolutely. As mm -hmm. believers, Jesus calls us to even love our enemies and pray for those mm. who persecute us. Mm. Mm. That has been so convinced, convinced. <sighs> like we have no other option. The measure is love. Unfortunately, he has love for people that I don't even like. Mm -hmm. There's so much life and joy and peace that comes out of that place. Not saying that is easy. It is not. Not at all. But it not is all, all worth it. <laughs> Just in closing, what what is a call or challenge that you will give to these three different groups? One, to your white friends. Two, your black friends. Three your church or any other community of believers? Okay. I'd say to my white friends, the very few ones that I have, um, I'm just playing. But uh, I'd say to, you know, be open and to like be very intentional about your heart. Be intentional about loving well and loving others well. And on both sides of the coin, like you said, you know, just because you're different doesn't mean guys can't be friends. And, you know, like, for, like, my friends, for, like, my like my black friends is, like, don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid yeah. to speak out. We all have stories that not, not we all, they all have amazing stories to tell that can really help, like, convince people and, like, push people to change and to check their hearts. Um, whether it's Jeeber or Isaiah, stories like that, that really need to be told. And I encourage them and I encourage anyone who is struggling to share your story to speak up, speak out. I mean, it's, it's too important of a time to not. And failure to speak up and speak out is it's complicit with the enemy. And that's the devil. Yeah. The enemy is not the people we disagree with, by the way. It's the devil. I hope you all, let's, let's get that in our hearts. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's about it. Like we, and, and then for my, like, one more thing is that we have a privilege. If you look like me, I mean, just that's unfortunately how it's been. You have a privilege, you know, so use it. Flip, this on it. Flip it on its head. Speak up. Speak out. Be a force for this movement. Be a force for Jesus in this time. And don't ever apologize for that.
and don't ever cower. Black, white, we all need to assess our hearts and ask God just to come and reveal and speak truth to us and what that next step is that we can take toward um, this racial reconciliation. Mm -hmm. but, but it goes deeper than that, like you're saying, like racism is just one symptom of this issue of sin that is in all of our hearts. This is so much bigger than a political issue. This is people's lives. Is there anything else that you want to share before I end this? Um, I'll, I'm going to say this one more time. Church, I know. I see the, where y'all be going at the end when, P, when Pastor Keith tells us to go talk to people. <laughs> I'm calling y'all out right now. When we get back, doesn't matter. Go talk to someone you don't know. Go learn, go share for five minutes and do that now. Reach out in your Zoom life groups. Reach out, learn, like get these people that you don't talk to on a daily basis and learn from them. Why people, let's humble ourselves. Let's learn a little bit. As a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you received. Mm. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love, making every effort, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body. We are his body, church, and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope, when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all of us, who is over all and through all and in all. That's good. Thank you and God bless you.